This diagram is a nice simplification of how your page is actually rendered. You have the HTML and the CSS. You can think of that as literally the HTML file and the CSS file. You then have these two yellow blocks, the DOM and the CSS DOM. The DOM stands for Document Object Model and the CSS stands for the CSS Object Model. These are internal tree representations to the browser and it contains nodes within this tree and it matches the, the relevant parts of example in the CSS, each node might represent a style rule. And in the DOM, each node will, in fact, you've most likely used this, um, each node will represent a HTML element, for example. And these two are then combined into what's called the render tree. The render tree is slightly unique in the sense that, well, first of all, it's a combination of the DOM and the CSS DOM, but also it only contains those nodes which are going to be rendered. So if you think about the DOM, we've got the head element, but the head element is not really rendered like onto the page visually. It doesn't need to be painted. So the render tree excludes that. The render tree then goes through a process called layout. Layout is the means by which the browser goes through each node and determines where on the page it has to be drawn. So it's, think of it as the geometry, if you like. Finally, after this layout step, the browser has everything it needs in the render tree. So the render tree is then converted into, I think it's called a layer tree and some other trees that we don't need to worry about. And that's finally painted. Let's take a look at a few of these. Um, we've got the document object model. So constructing a DOM. You don't need to pay attention to this diagram too much. The really important part is what's at the bottom. This is that output. So the browser has taken our input, which is what it's received over the network most likely. And it's produced this internal tree representation, which is the DOM which interestingly enough is exposed to us through JavaScript. We then have the CSS object model, and I'm not actually going to show another diagram for this simply because it's so similar to the DOM construction. The DOM and the CSS object model are combined into what's called a render tree. And as I mentioned, it only contains those nodes which are actually going to be rendered. I'd like you to pay attention to a few things. If you can see there, we've got a head element, but of course a head element is not really rendered or painted onto the screen. Therefore, it's not included in the render tree, but it's still part of the DOM. Afterwards, we have the layout process. And this is where, again, it goes through the render tree and each node in that render tree has its geometry calculated. The browser figures out where it needs to be uh, relative to the viewport. And after that, of course, each node is now ready to be painted. So this is by no means an accurate representation of what the layout process looks like. But I thought it's kind of interesting because it has some similarities. And while again, it's not accurate, so please don't you know, study it too much. Um, sometimes I guess a visual aid can help with understanding a concept. So if you imagine on the right, we've got the, the render tree and you imagine on the left, we've got the web page. Well, you can see that the browser has sort of gone through each of these nodes and it's kind of determining where they belong on the web page, which again is on the left. Let's think about paint. And in fact, what I'm going to do for paint is I'm going to give a quick visual demo. We're going to focus on the painting of one particular element. And that's this um, the square right in the top left. First of all, let's have a look at the square. As you can see, it's got a width and a height. It's got um, a, a rotation applied to it. It's got a border and that's a 10 pixel border. I want you to pay attention to that because that's going to be significant in a sec. Now, the latest version of Chrome, so that's Chrome Canary, actually has some interesting features in the timeline panel where it can show you the individual sort of painting steps that occur. So I'm going to focus on that and we're going to see how this square came to be. So first of all, I'll reload the page from the timeline panel and that's going to straight away sort of record a timeline session. And somehow we're going to find this square in this recording. So bear with me because it's sometimes a bit fiddly to use and luckily I found it. Um, <laughs> So it's this one. And what the timeline is doing is it's saying part of this recording includes a paint event. What we can do is we can click on that paint event and it's now, again, this is the part that's new, by the way, it's bringing up this paint profiler panel. And the idea is it shows you the individual draw calls, which were executed to draw this entire page. Now we're not interested in the page because that's like too many draw calls to sift through. So we're going to find out roughly where that square is drawn. So Here's a square. And again, remember, this is a rasterized image. The timeline panel is trying to be helpful. It's saying, oh, this paint event, um, th this is what it corresponds with. So again, this is not the web page. The web page is on the left. This is just a preview of that, um, or rather an output of that paint event. 
So let's scrub down and find that square. And I think it's this one over here. Cool. So we found the square and I'd like to go through each draw call. And by actually scrubbing through like this, I've excluded the parts we're not interested in. And I'm going to focus on the square in particular. So we start out and it's got this set matrix. And I'm going to assume here, I haven't verified the um, the individual like matrix values, but I'm going to assume that's for the rotation. And then we've got a draw rect. And that's, you know, that's very understandable. It's, it's a rectangle for the, for the square. Um, then it seems we've got we've got some more draw rect calls. And if you look closely, as I'm scrubbing through, it's actually drawing the borders. That's the top, right, bottom, and left borders. And again, if you think about it more, it does actually make sense. These borders are totally wrecks. And if you're thinking about low level calls, yeah, it kind of adds up. So that's this is quite a fascinating insight into how such a simple square, at least simple from our point of view, is drawn behind the scenes. And as you can see, there's a draw text blob which is the, the hello text. So that is it for this lesson. Um, I wanted to focus on how pages are rendered because, you know, often if you're researching performance on the web, you'll find lots of specific optimizations, for example, concatenate all your scripts or minify. Um, but these are very specific and they can change over time. For example, HTTP2 might actually make the, the requirement of concatenation kind of irrelevant because of some of the optimizations that it comes with. The reason why we're taking this theoretical look into how a page is rendered is because the steps that we have just discussed, so that's, you know, tree construction, the, the layout process, the render trees, the painting, those steps, believe it or not, don't just occur on page load. They occur throughout the life cycle of your web page. And that's why understanding what's going on but also, you know, how to actually diagnose this using the DevTools um, is really important. So thanks for listening. Really appreciate it. And I'll catch you later.